Tara of Love Yoga. I found the practice of yoga when I was caregiving for a loved one with cancer over a decade ago. And since then, yoga has been a consistent part of my life. And I'll teach and provide yoga therapy for yoga with cancer support, grief, and trauma support as well. I'm also known as Sprinkles in the First Ascents world, and I'm here today to provide a yoga class for grit health. And that's because during the pandemic, First Ascents began to offer yoga more consistently at their Hero Recharge programs for healthcare workers. And I am the yoga consultant for the First Ascents programs. Um, I recently just finished teaching an eight-week yoga series for their community online, which you can access on their Facebook page. And that's because yoga really allows us to be in living it. We can get more introspective with ourselves when we can't be out living it on adventures all the time. And with Grit Health, their mission is to provide support and resources for cancer patients and caregivers. And those are supposed to then help improve the experience and provide community. And yoga does just that. It's a great opportunity through a practice of yoga, and there's a lot of research behind why this works. So I just want to take a moment to tell you about the ways that yoga can help you while you're on your cancer journey. It can help you relax and reset your nervous system. This is very hard to do. A lot of us have a hard time even doing this while we're sleeping because we need to completely be able to relax in order for our nervous system to reset from the stress response that we can feel when we're going through a difficult time in life. Another way is to open the posture so that the organs can all have proper um, ability to function. Also an open heart is an open mind. Yoga can also provide a little bit of an emotional release by moving energy within the body. And so those feelings like anxiety, fear, stress, or depression, we can get a little bit stuck. Yoga is a way to actually move through that physically. And it doesn't have to be big movements either, just enough to stimulate a little energy flow. Also, yoga can provide physical and mental strength, which we could all use a little bit more of. Helps stay intentional and present. And it can also help with other side effects that you may feel from your cancer journey, perhaps some chronic pain or digestive functioning, even cardiovascular and respiratory um, functioning, and it helps with immune health. So lots of reasons to do yoga. Now the inspiration for this class revolves around, um, we're just coming into November, so it's Pancreatic Awareness, um, Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month. It's also Caregiver Awareness Month. So um, we'll be doing some postures that do support some strengthening in the abdominal region. And we'll be doing also just coming out of October, which is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, some heart opening to strengthen the back as well as open the front side of the body. And that will also help us with that caregiver support, just bringing some love in and just opening up this region of the body. So I've been talking plenty. Let's go ahead and get started. No matter what and who you are, you will definitely benefit from this class. There's a lot to um, just bring into our bodies and to feel. So I just wanted to give some shouts out to those specific demographics before we get started. Now, find an easy seated position. And so that might look like cross-legged. I like to push myself up on something so that my hips are a little bit higher because that makes me strip my spine nice and straight. Um, otherwise, you could also sit in a pose where your knees come <clears throat> underneath you and you sit back on your heels, which is known as hero's pose. So whichever feels more comfortable, we'll just be here for a few minutes as we start to settle into a breathing pattern. Close your eyes and feel your roots first, the sit bones pressing down as your spine lengthens and lifts. Reach up through the top of your head so it's growing towards the ceiling. Allow your shoulders to shrug up towards your ears and then allow them to fall down your back as you exhale. And just start to observe your breath, how it's flowing in and out. We, we start to 
breathe more consciously, we often notice that the breath is moving maybe a little bit in a choppy pattern, or it might feel a little bit even shallow at first. So smooth the breath out. Even make the breath a little bit longer. By doing so, you may already start to feel a little sense of peace. <clears throat> we'll take this a step further. As you inhale, count to three. And as you exhale, count to three. And continue this pattern, inhaling and exhaling for the same count. And if three feels like it's a little short, you could just lengthen that, increase the count to four or five. Just feeling more expansion throughout your entire torso with the breath. And then as you keep the breath flowing out and in equally, Imagine the breath flowing in and down through your nose and then rising up and out through your nose. As the breath moves in and down, you may feel it expand into your belly. And then as it rises up and out, flows seamlessly. You may want to even envision this as an ocean wave. So take yourself towards a body of water and imagine it flowing in and down into your body, expanding into the belly and then rising up and out. If you're envisioning that ocean wave, it's as though it's rushing in and down towards the shore as it expands into the belly. And then it rises up and back out as though the wave is going back into the ocean. Take a few more mindful breaths here. Simply notice that as you breathe more consciously, you're not thinking quite as much about all the things you have to do or the worries. There's a state of calm. There's to come over the body. And so we'll take that breath and add some movement. I'm going to open your eyes to watch, and I'm going to actually take my legs and cross them the other direction while we do this next movement. We'll take the hands to heart center, press them together. And then as you inhale, feel your palms pressing in. And as you exhale, send your palms forward, round your spine. As you inhale, open your arms like wings, feel your heart expand. And then as you exhale, bring your palms back together and round. Inhale, draw your hands to your heart center and smile. Again, exhale, press your palms forward, round your back. Inhale, open your arms like wings, nice and wide. And again, exhale, draw in and round. Inhale, hands to heart center and smile. We'll do one more round as you Exhale, send your hands forward, round the back. Inhale, open your arms wide like wings. Exhale, arms come back together, palms touching round. And then inhale, hands come to heart center. Pause here, close your eyes once again, and just draw an intention into your heart. So thinking of something, whether you're a cancer patient or a caregiver, what do you want in your life? A little bit more love, perhaps it's hope, maybe it's strength, or even softness and vulnerability. Draw it in to your heart with a few mindful breaths. Place your hands back down on your knees. As you inhale, your heart comes forward, draw your shoulder blades back. And then as you exhale, round your spine. 
We'll start to come into some Suki rolls, inhaling forward and exhaling down back. We're starting to get into the abdominal region, side bodies even. And we'll switch directions. So exhale as you round back and inhale as you come forward. We'll make our way back to center. And then just release your arms down. Inhale, sweep them up, reaching tall. And then exhale, bring your hands down to your neck and just start to massage it a little bit. So we're gonna ease a little of the stress that we feel in the neck. And so this is where, if you're a caregiver, giving yourself just a little bit of love here. If you're a cancer patient as well, we all need it. So massaging the neck creating a little bit of release. And then we'll just place the hands down and roll your ears side to side so the ear goes towards the shoulder. You may pause, lengthen one side of your neck, even roll forward and back a few times so you get a little release back here. And then coming back to center, bringing your fingertips to your shoulders. Inhale, elbows come forward and up. And then exhale, release them back and down. So just some big shoulder rolls to open the heart, open the shoulders. Do about four to five of these. And then bringing the hands down, we'll start to transition to hands and knees. <clears throat> I was sitting on a blanket, so I'm going to put this under my knees for now. Back shoulders over wrists, hips back above your knees. And then we'll inhale, drop the belly gaze, comes forward. And as you exhale, press down, round your spine as your chin tucks to chest. Inhale, drop the belly, shine your heart through. And exhale, round, draw up and in. Moving like this, a few more times, just warming up the spine. We'll come back to our tabletop shape, more neutral. And move into, um, this is called swimmers. So if you have had breast cancer, or know someone who has, this is a help with range of motion. So we'll take an inhale. And as you exhale, move your left arm back, hips come to your heels, and then inhale, your arm comes up and over, whole range of motion. Again, exhale, your arm sweeps back. And inhale, keep your gaze on your fingers as your arm comes up and around. We'll do one more, exhale, back. Inhale, back, up. Place the left hand down. Balance back out by taking a kick cat cow, inhaling and exhaling. Come back to neutral tabletop and we'll take those swimmers on the right side. So take an inhale, start. As you exhale, your hand sweeps back as well as your hips come to your heels. Inhale, the arm all the way up and over. Huge range of motion here. So this can feel good. Also, just for anyone who works at a computer, because it really opens up shoulders, your heart, all of the stuff that we can tend to, that slumping position, get that nice range of motion. We'll come back to neutral once again, cat cow, inhale forward, exhale, drop up and in, just to reset the spine. And now we'll move towards a little bit of strengthening. So you're going to take that right foot back and then rock forward and back a few times, get a nice little calf stretch. If it feels okay to you, start to feel your core active and then allow your right leg to raise up behind you. And then from here, start to reach the left arm forward, reach through the fingers as you kick back into your heel. Full line of energy, draw into midline. Now you can hold this. This might be enough. You can also go inhale, kick forward and back, and then also exhale, draw up and in, elbow to knee. Inhale, lengthen. 
exhale, curl. We'll do one more, inhale and exhale. We'll lengthen back out and then place your hand and knee back down. Cat cow. And we'll move to the other side. So from that neutral side, slide the left foot back, lengthen the leg, rock forward and back. When you feel ready, feel the weight in your palms nice and evenly into the fingertips and allow that back leg to float up, even out the hips. If you feel stable in the front, you may try to reach that right arm forward. Reaching from fingers back to your heel on an inhale. Stay here or exhale elbow to knee. Inhale, reaching forward and back. And exhale, drawing up and in to curl. One more time, inhale. And exhale. Back to a nice straight, active body. Hand and knee come down. Nice work. From here, just walk your fingertips forward. Unbend those elbows. Take an inhale, press into your fingertips around the spine. Exhale, melt your heart down. So puppy pose. It's a huge heart opener. So you'll really feel this in your shoulders, almost like it's rinsing. You can stay here, roll the forehead back and forth. You can take as many breaths here as you like. Hold it a little longer. When you're feeling okay, you'll just start to bring the forearms down and wiggle the rest of your body down onto the mat, coming into Sphinx Pose. So the forearms are parallel, press into the palms and draw the heart through. And I can stay here or I like to rock my head Side to side, so a little bit more of a neck release. You can take my chin to chest, pop up and round, get a little release back there. Another big breath in, and then release down. Bring your arms down by your sides, wiggle the hips, root the toes down. And then on an inhale, Press the toes down as you lift up your chest and your shoulders squeeze together. You keep pressing and lifting. Maybe your feet come off the ground. Press everything to center. Lift on an inhale. Maybe you release a little on the exhale and then lift up more. Do that two or three times. Feel the strengthening in your back and the opening in your heart. Lower down. Make a pillow for your forehead. Bend your knees, rock them side to side. And just relax for a moment. You can bring your feet down to the earth. Take a few mindful breaths here. We'll be making your way up to standing. So take your time to get there. When you feel ready, you'll come to a standing position. So we're gonna get up onto our feet. <clears throat> Bring your feet about hip width distance apart. Shake out the arms. And we're gonna find Tadasana, which is known as mountain pose. Before we do it, I want everyone to shake it out. So when we have a lot of stress in the body or anytime we have emotions that are just running through and it feels stressful and the stress response is active, then our bodies really want to just kind of shake it out and let it go, just like animals do after they are activated um, or some stress response. So I don't mean just kind of like, all right, I'm shaking it. I'm like, all right, really let it go. So shake the arms, shake the legs, move around. I know you guys are all at home, so just let it go for a few seconds. Let the energy stir up and then just start to settle down like a snow globe. So you start to come into feeling your feet once again on the ground, feeling the roots growing down. 
feeling the base of your mountain strong. So you, your legs may even come a little wider. And then you think of from your feet stacking your ankles right up above them, drawing the energy up towards your knees and stacking them above your ankles, drawing energy and awareness to your hips to stack above your knees. And you may even take a moment to realize that the lower part of your body now, through a little bit of intentionality and presence, feels more grounded. Arms are down by your sides. Lift the spine up. And you then allow the shoulders to come up and back, stacking them above your hips. This neck gets long. And reach through the crown of your head so your head stacks right above the shoulders. You may even take your chin and bring it back just a touch, releasing your jaw. We hold so much tension there. And then feel your strength in this pose. Take a deep breath in all the way up to the crown of your head. And then push that breath down all the way to your feet. Another deep breath in, I am. On your exhale, grounded, safe, secure, rooted, and strong. Standing in your unwavering mountain pose. Now from this strength, we'll start to move again. In the inhale, reach the arms all the way up. Smile as your palms join and exhale, hands to your heart. Again, inhale, sweep the arms up. And then exhale, we'll take a forward fold down to the mat. Take a moment here to release the head and neck. Keep the knees bent. On your inhale, round as you rise, arms sweep overhead. And on your exhale, hands back to your heart center. Inhale, arms sweep up. And then on your exhale, Diving forward is that forward fold again. Releasing the neck, paddling out your legs just a little bit here, introducing a hamstring stretch. And then inhaling all the way back up, hands above your head, and exhale, hands to your heart center. Inhale, palms press up. We're gonna take a side bend, so join your fingers, the pointers together, reach for the ceiling and then exhale side bend to your right inhale up through center and exhale side bend to your left one more time each side inhale and exhale gazing under your arm rooting into your feet equally as you rise and back to the other side Inhale back through center and then exhale, open your arms and dive down forward fold. This time we'll hang for just a little bit. So keep the knees bent to start. You can release your head and neck, maybe grab elbows. And you'll notice that pulls down with gravity, starts to release some of the tension in the back. Just sway side to side. Again, opening up the hamstrings a little bit more. I always like to start with the bent because really the point of this pose specifically is to really, um, really put the brakes on the nervous system. So when we get our head below our hearts, it allows us to slow down and kind of reset. And you want to do that with comfort to not have the strain in the back of the leg. So whatever helps you feel like comfortable in this pose. And then we'll start to press down to the feet, sweep the arms back mm. wide and up. And then again, exhale back to our forward fold. This time, keep your right foot forward, step the left knee back. So we're gonna come into a low lunge. Now, Press down into your knee and your front foot as you rise up. Feel a nice steady base, your inner thighs hug together. Press down and then lift up. Take an inhale, exhale, cactus the arms. And again, we'll inhale, reach tall, and exhale, cactus. 
Inhale. And then exhale. Cactus as your arms come down. Hands spread your foot. We'll straighten the front leg this time. Toes come up to the ceiling. So we're in a half split. And we're going to get into a hamstring stretch. A few options here. So you can kind of wag the tail and feel into different parts of your hamstring. We actually have three parts. Or you may come forward and back a few times. So dynamic movement in sync with your breath. Inhaling and exhaling always through the nose with yoga. So it becomes a little more forceful ujjayi breath in through the nose, out through the nose. So there's constriction down the back of the throat. You're feeling in. Come into the bend of your knee. We're going to take one more standing pose in this flow. We're going to come up and tilt your heel to a 45 degree angle. So this is the base for warrior one. The front knee is still bent. And as you rise up, hands come to your hips. Now, the hip is sort of open on the left now. And we want to Start to turn it a little bit more forward, but not so much that it hurts. Pressing into the back edge of that left foot. Rise up with the arms and then push into the bed of the front knee. So you're in your warrior one shape. We're gonna take a few moments to use some dynamic movement again. So this time, inhale, straighten the leg and exhale, bend the knee. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. You may add the arms this time. Inhale and exhale. This time maybe you hold. Arms are up overhead, reaching. Tap into the breath, hold it steady. One more breath in. And then exhale, hands come down. Bring both knees down to the mat. And you have a choice of whether to go back to puppy pose, child's pose, or downward dog. So child's pose, knees are wide, arms are long in front of you. Puppy is what we did earlier where your hips are in the air, but you melt the heart down. And some of you may be ready for a downward dog. So I simply just bring my hands a little wider, bring my knees up, tilt the head down between my arms. Then start to straighten your legs one at a time, sort of paddling them out. And so you always do whatever feels good in the body. There's no need to take an downward dog, but if you're feeling it, go for it. Always alternatives. In whatever pose you've chosen, we're going to come down onto the belly. Hands are right there by your chest, draw the elbows in. Press into the toes, inhale, roll the chest up, cobra, and exhale, lower. Root into the toes, feel the lower back engage, and then inhale, chest comes forward as your shoulder blades shrunk back, and exhale down. We'll make our way back to standing, the top of the mat, rising tall, arms sweep all the way up overhead, and then exhale all the way down to your forward fold. This time, the left leg is going to stay forward. Right steps back. Draw that back knee. And then again, inhale. Arms are going to come up so you're in a low lunge. So reaching tall on the inhale. Exhale, drag the elbows down. Shine your heart forward for cat. Two more times. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale, this time hands come down to frame the foot. Straighten your front leg. 
And again, decide if you want to do the hip swagging side to side, or perhaps rocking forward and back, feeling into your hamstring. We've done that a few times. We'll make our way towards that warrior one shape. So come into the bend of the left knee, right foot comes towards the mat so it's flat. Press into the back edge of that right foot. Press into your front foot as you rise. So feeling your roots. Hands come to your hips first. Gently start to rotate them and then arms come up. Rotate the rib cage. And so Kind of have here, the upper body coming a little more towards the front. We'll come into some dynamic movement. So we inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. It doesn't really matter which way you're moving with your breath. Whatever feels natural to you, you can even reverse it, inhale, and exhale. By moving with your breath, you get a little deeper into the pose. And I will start to hold it for a few mindful, steady breaths. You may get a little deeper into your breathing here. Really focus on inhaling through the nose, Exhaling through your nose, feeling it down the back of your throat. This is your control, is your breathing. When you can control your breathing on your yoga mat, it starts to make you feel a little bit more in control in your life. And that's the cool thing about yoga. It's everything you practice, then you take with you and you use it. So it's really not about just doing these poses on the mat. And then we'll start to bring the hands back down. Good. And both knees to the mat. Now again, child's pose, puppy pose, or downward dog. You choose whatever works for you. Take a few breaths. I'm going to go to child's pose. And so this is your home base. You just start slowing the breath down allowing the nervous system to feel safe here. And we'll start to make our way onto our backs. This is the great thing about yoga is there's peaks and valleys. So we've already peaked and we're gonna make our way back down. So coming supine. <clears throat> And begin with your legs long, arms just down by your sides. And then start to bend your knees in towards your chest. Bring your hands towards your knees. We're gonna do a few little pelvic rocks. So as you inhale, push your feet forward and your knees. And then exhale, you draw your knees back in. So you wanna keep your core engaged and your back as flat as possible. Inhale forward. Exhale, draw them back in. Inhale and exhale. You can continue with these tiny movements, or some of us may want to go a little bit bigger. And so the arms may come down, interlace the hands behind your back or your head, and just take some big bicycles with your legs. So it's leading with your heel. Almost like an inhale takes the whole length of one of your legs to make a circle. The exhale takes the whole motion of the other leg. So super slow, spine is flat, core is engaged. And we also have some movement in our hips. So good, all good things. And then try going backwards. So this might be a little weird. See if your circles get a little smaller, if you can keep them just as big reverse bicycles. And then the next time that right knee starts to come into your chest, bring the left leg to the mat and hug the right knee in. Good. So the right knee is in. You're going to rock it 
side. Begin to strengthen or strengthen, straighten your leg, kick up through the heel. And then take a few movements with your ankles. Inhale, point the toes up and exhale, bring your toes down. Keep that left leg active to support you. And then start to move your foot into circles. So we're getting big ankle circles here. Moving in both directions, of course, breathing through all of it. Going back to center. Arms come out to a T for support, bend your knee. We're gonna take a few circles here with our hips. So you can start with your knee coming out to the side and back around, crossing the other leg and then into the chest. And then you may also extend your leg fully. So it's really what feels good to you. This takes a lot of abdominal strength as well as leg strength, but it's getting movement into the hips. So if that's best done with your knee bent, start there and work towards bigger movements if it feels good to you. After three times in both directions, the knee hugs in, pause, take an inhale. As you exhale, you're gonna drop the knee to the left and the gaze comes to the right. So taking a twist, the breath feels constricted while we're twisting and that's okay, just smooth it back out. I'm taking three to four really nice deep breaths here. And slowly then beginning to unwind back to center. Before we switch sides, bend that left knee, hook the right foot over. So we're in this figure four. You can just push your hand into the inner thigh, push your spine down, or thread the needle. Hands come through around the left hamstring, flex both of your ankles so that your knees stay safe, and then feel into this outer part of your hip. Start to make our way to that other side. Left foot comes down, followed by the right. Before we switch sides, you may want to just wedge your way for your legs side to side. Your inhale brings the knees through center and the exhale drops them over. You can roll the back of your head along the mat as well so that your gaze moves the opposite direction at your knees. Next time your knees come to center, pause, bring the left feet in and the right leg long. Rock the knee side to side. And again, flexing the right leg so that right leg is active. And then start to straighten the left to the ceiling. Point and flex the toes. Inhaling toes up and exhaling down or whatever works for you. Just sinking movement with breath. And then starting to circle the ankles, big circles. So just getting these little movements and allowing our joints to have some fluid and some space. Always good. And then we'll start to make our way, arms out to a T and we'll make those big hip circles. So starting with the knee first, Maybe straightening the leg. Again, no need to do it. We're just doing some movement into the hips and then switching directions. And again, we do this three times in both directions. And then you start to get towards the end of that third one. Hug the knee in. Take an inhale, exhale, drape it over to the right, gaze comes to the left, and breathe. And so your shoulder is on the mat. It's okay if the knee is lifted. We're not really trying to force anything here, just allowing ourselves to relax into the twist. Mindful breathing.
Inhale, knees rock back to center. Before we move to the other side, bend the right knee, place your foot on the ground. Hook the left foot over the right knee. And then we start to, again, press your hand into the inner thigh, a star that might be enough here, or you could thread through the needle, grab your right hamstring and feel this figure four shape, which stretches more into the outer part of your hip. Now slowly place both of your feet back on the ground. Blow in last pose, hug the knees into the chest and take your hands around your knees. This might be where you stay. You may bring this, the soles of your feet towards the ceiling and reach for your ankles or the outsides of your feet. So whichever, keep your, whichever you can do and still keep your sacrum, this lower part of your back rooted to the mat, then that works. So if you grab for your feet and the sacrum comes up, then just take your hands a little lower. And draw your knees into your chest. Give yourself a big squeeze. Have some gratitude for this time you've taken to practice. Have gratitude for your own cancer journey, for the caregivers in your life. And then think of that intention that you brought into your heart in the beginning of class. What is it that you want to take with you off of your yoga mats? Take a big breath in. Feel that intention one more time. Big breath out. Release your body so that you're taking up a little space on your mat into this shavasana or final resting pose. Now, as you lie here, I'm just going to talk through a relaxation. So just settle in and feel your body grounded upon the mat. Feel that sense of safety, security. Stable ground beneath you. Take a big breath in, fill up with air all the way through the crown of your head and on your exhale, push it down to your feet. Do that two more times, big breath in, fill up. On your exhale, feel yourself soften and relax. Do that again, last one. Feel yourself filling up with air. And as you release it, soften even more so. This resting pose is perhaps one of the most important parts of class because when you can really take a moment to completely unwind, completely relax, it allows your nervous system to reset so that when you go back into your day, you feel a little more prepared. You feel like you're kind of firing from all cylinders and at a pace that's comfortable for you, nice and steady. But to get there, let's further relax. Let your breath soften. There's nothing more to control. We've done a lot of breath practice today. We're just letting the breath return to its natural rhythm. With that, can you relax your mind as much as your breath and body? The thoughts that may come in, just send them away without judgment, with just that little message of, I don't really have time for that right now, so could you come back later, or maybe not. <laughs> Letting it all go. Can you relax further still into a place in your heart? Softening, letting go, expectations, worries of 
Anything that can't serve you in this moment. Lying here for just a few more quiet, soft, mindful moments. Begin to slowly arise from this rested state. Take a big breath in, reach your arms overhead. So it's like a big full body stretch, your fingers down to your toes, moving around like you would in the morning, maybe side to side. Circle your wrists and ankles. Take a big breath in. As you exhale, just draw your knees into your chest and start to roll onto your side, pausing here for a moment. So when you feel ready, just make your way up to a seated position. And draw your hands to heart center. Take a big breath in. Sigh it out on the exhale. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope this practice finds you well and that you feel relaxed, more in the present moment, more peaceful. Um, again, I'm Sprinkles and I was here with First Ascents. And so if you want any more information on First Ascents, you can just go to their website, www.firstascents.org. And there's a bunch of um, classes on their Facebook page too. So perhaps you could check those out if you're looking for some more yoga content, or you could also contact me through my website, which is just www.love.yoga. And that's L-O-V for love. So I hope that, um, again, you enjoyed this practice. The light and love in me honors the very same in each of you. Thank you so much for your help for having us today to share this practice with you. Namaste.